spending all day writing estimates for people who have storm damage to their homes. Then I'm spending all night making videos about our sailboat. But tonight, I'm beginning the video by talking about boat trailers. I don't know where I took a hard left in my life and decided I would go from gussied up and photoshopped Instagram to who are we kidding? This is really actually me excited by rusty old trailers on YouTube. So let's talk about trailers and more specifically about leaf springs on trailers. I know this is super exciting stuff so just try to keep up. Leaf springs are underneath the trailer and hidden just behind the tires. They are springs that allow the trailer to bounce as it travels down the road so that when you hit bumps it absorbs some of the shock from the road and the weight of the boat that it's carrying. Leaf springs are composed of a few thin pieces of steel that curve into an arch. The amount of layers of leaves determines the amount of weight the trailer can carry. They're a pretty important part of the trailer, which is why when ours look like this, we worry just a little, or a lot. Yeah, we worry a lot. So we took it to two shops to be checked out, and both told us the trailer could use some TLC, but it was really sturdy enough and could carry the weight of the boat. Mmm, not so sure about that. We are taking the boat back to the storage. Can't do anything with it right now. We're scared to drive this thing back and forth anywhere because there's so much rust in there. We don't know how it's gonna hold up driving it around all over the place. It's making us nervous. So we're gonna try and plan it so that Matthews Marina can paint the bottom at the same time as we can fix the trailer and get them both done at the same time. We have returned our per diem to her parking spot at the taco truck. Covered her up with a tarp and we're gonna leave her there and formulate a new plan. We gotta fix that trailer so we're rethinking. It doesn't really need the bottom paint super duper drastically but we need to get the keel checked anyway. So we're gonna go find a place where we can get the bottom painted and the keel checked. estimates to replace the leaf springs and decided to wait a while and try to do it ourselves later. We're not in a huge hurry since our per diem is going to live at a marina anyway. We've taken our measurements and we'll order new spring leaves and we'll post a video of that project in a future episode. I know you will wait with bated breath. In the meantime, our per diem went to get some bottom paint while we buffed and resealed all of our windows. Today's installment of what more money can we put into the boat. <laughs> We're redoing the windows and when I say we, I mean Donovan. These are the original, obviously. And we scrub them with this stuff. And then he's going to put new rubber stuff underneath they were leaking. Wow, they look so much better. Oh, the glass came out. Really nice. I mean, they've been clean and straight. So this stuff at the bottom is going to be so Yeah. It's going to look a lot better. Oh yeah, it already does. This is the kit that we got from Catalina. There's one more thing. So this is the new rubber stuff. And then what is this stuff? And there's another one of those. Does this come from Catalina too? Yeah. So our per diem is at Matthews Marine right now getting probably bottom paint maybe. Sanding it, looking at the keel and what was the other thing? Oh, the fiberglass. The four main fiberglass boo-boos on the boat. We're getting an estimate to repair. <clears throat> After getting over that sticker shock, we quickly decided we'd either repair the damage ourselves or cover it up with duct tape to avoid leaks and just get on the boat, go sailing, and worry about the less important stuff later. Do it just like this, okay? 
and then put the silicone in here, all right, on each side. Make sense? And then once we get it, it says, after setting the glass into the glazing channel, have a helper put a bead of silicone cement on the inside of the window gap. There's this little right here. That would be this area if you look at it just like that. This one's smaller. So we put silicone in there and then... Oh yeah, yeah. I could really tell this was going to be a half day project and I hadn't even gotten out of my pajamas yet. But it was the perfect opportunity to get them done while the boat was in the shop getting bottom paint. And it only ended up taking about an hour to do all four windows and they were ready to get installed back on the boat. Based on the wear and tear of the old seals, we potentially avoided some pretty serious leaking issues. We are coming to look at our per diem to see what the keel looks like now that it's full. Looking good. It looks like they sanded her already. No? No, the bottom of the boat looks like it's already been sanded. Uh, yeah. Um, that transducer that's back there is not, is not going to be used. So what Donovan is asking the guy about is a transducer, which is a device under the boat that sends out sound waves and receives echoes so your depth finder can interpret how deep the water is. They help you not run your boat aground in shallow water, which we have a lot of. We will talk more about transducers in a future episode, but there is an old transducer under our boat that is useless, so we want to know if we should remove it off the hull and cover up the hole or just leave it the way it is. Um, yeah, we can. Oh, we can pick it off. That's what I have to make. I would have to ask Tom about that. Okay. What would you like us to do? Well, I guess... Get the hole in the boat. Yeah. It's being, right now, it's, it's covered because of that, so I don't know. I mean, it's fine, It's and, and it's not leaking or causing any danger to just leave it be, but... Because yeah. if you cut it, then you're going to have to repair it, and that's going to raise the price a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if we remove it, there will be a hole there which will need to be covered up with fiberglass and raise the cost of this little project even more. So we decided to leave it there. If it ain't broke. At this point, we want to save money where we can and put it where we need it most. Also, they were already taking a really long time doing the bottom paint and we were getting antsy. We just wanted them to spend their time finishing up the bottom paint, sandblasting the keel and painting it, and just giving us our boat back. How does the keel look and the connection and the, the, um, the what's it called, the bolt or whatever? Is it pretty corroded? It is? Okay. Because that was my concern. Somebody told me that if that breaks and the whole thing falls, the whole boat sinks and it freaked me out. Yeah, if you're sailing me. Yeah. So, in your opinion, it looks... You know, it's all your weight when you're sailing me. Yeah. You're really weighty. So, in your opinion, it looks good? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right, What color is the paint? Black? Black. Yeah, let me just see if I can find color. check on the boat again to see what progress we've got and also to measure how big we would like the name the vinyl stickers to be made um, that we're gonna put on both the port and starboard side and then back here we're thinking about putting the name of the port but on that right side where it said Sandra the ladder hangs down but not all the time it's a very flimsy ladder we need to replace it anyway um, but I think we're going to go with about a three foot wide name, including the little logo boat and about a six inch letter so that it's big enough to see from farther away, but not completely overtaking. So it looks like they've sanded it and they're working on the keel. Yeah, those are three inches. So we're going to go with six inches. We already have those. Bob gave them to us. Remember the stickers Why? when we bought the boat? Get those made in the same if they ever send us our, our information, we applied for a registration 
a month ago. We haven't received anything yet. I'm not sure what's going on. Just get her in the water. Of course, there is a hurricane coming at us right now as we speak. Hurricane Isis, 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 <laughs> is probably uh, crossing the border from Florida into Georgia right now and hopefully staying away from us. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Everybody that lives here. Yeah, this is very, this is no man's land. Oh, man. well, this is what's that? Frip. That's Frip. Frip mm -hmm. Island. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that private island. But this little creek right here is unknown, pretty much, because it's so shallow. People, it's not marked. But you're gonna be here. Yeah, I was just gonna tell you. So this is the marina, the mm -hmm. Skull Creek, that's perfect. right here, actually, where the comb is, mm -hmm. and the boat ramp though is off of Pinky Island. It's yeah, right, yeah, there's here. One right there. So mm -hmm. one of us is gonna have to motor the boat mm -hmm. over to the marina, and then the jeep and the trailer drive it around. We'll just take something. another vehicle. And, and park it here. Well, you know what? Yeah. yeah. But this is great, and then you know, going to Port Royal and, and Beaufort's nothing. So when it cools off and you got your boat ready. Mm -hmm. You can, and hopefully this COVID thing goes away. <laughs> we'll be able to socialize and go over there and hang out now. Online it's called saltwatertides.com. Okay. And then you go to the state, and then you go to the place, and it's just all listed. So okay. you can figure out the tide on Hilton Head, and here, and, and up the May River. The May River, is usually about an hour after South Beach because it's about three miles, three or four miles up here. So that's okay, it takes that long. So it water takes time. that long, just two or three miles an hour. So when all that water pushes in, it takes about an hour longer to get up into it the takes an hour longer to get out. Mm -hmm. All that water is pushing in, mm -hmm. and it's still pushing in when the tide changes, so it's pulling itself out here. So it's still an hour, it's an hour behind whatever this is. And you can do that too, by golly, on a nice day. Even even though there are people there, it tucks around, mm -hmm. and and there's no bugs at all. There won't be any bugs here or there. Wow. The ocean breeze is blowing in, so the bugs can't. I mean, they just you always always anchor when there's just sand between you and the beach. Never anchor with a mangrove or a swamp. <laughs> then you'll get but chewed then up you a get lot. Eaten up. Yeah. You have to see where you're going. Like right, that dotted line? No, not this one. No, this is your channel. Okay. You got a green on the left and a red on the right. Right. Coming in here. Okay? Gotcha. Gotcha. And that's the same way here. You see, this is coming in from the ocean. Red, right, you're turning. Mm -hmm. Keep it on your right. You start go back. Okay, now watch what happens here. <laughs> you start going. Okay, you're returning. These go all the way to the shipping channel. Okay? So this doesn't, this is part of the intercoastal. But you still, these big, these are ocean buoys. So you're still returning. But when you get to this point, you're in the intercoastal waterway. So when you get here, you start going up, red's on your left. Huh. Because it's red, right, returning or going south on the intercoastal waterway. And see what happens is here, this is red, right coming in the channel, because that's the river. Right. And this, this says it goes all the way to Port Royal, because that's where they used to bring in ammunition, or ship out ammunition during Vietnam, not Vietnam. Yeah. They used to bring it in on the trains and you'd ship it out. And then um, when, you, when you're going south, the intercoastal, Intercoastal comes through here like this, and then it cuts across, and then it and then it goes into uh, you know, this is the intercoastal Calabobie. here. No, it's not even showing the intercoastal. Mm -hmm. This would be intercoastal here too. See this 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 has see this is these are markers coming in out of the ocean. The green you keep them to the left, so you'll stay on the right hand side, not far. Right. You know, hundred yards, fifty yards, but you'll see your depth finder. 
your subscription to Navionics. That's the same one that David had on his phone. And it's how much per year? It says $14.99, but that's just for US. Is that just for the iPad or can we put that $14.99 on our cell phones? It'd be nice if we use the same username and password. Boy, my brain, all those green right return marker explanations got me feeling like I'm gonna crash into every boat out there. So we're back at the boat shop for the 11th time in like 14 days and now I'm moody. We're running out of vacation days and a deployment is imminent and we've got to get the boat in the water and docked at the marina before we get deployed. Regardless if they take the transducer or not, he said it would be ready by Tuesday. So it's not gonna make a difference. My problem and my issue is that it's looked exactly the same for the last week. It hasn't been touched. And any time that we've been back here to look at it, it has not been raining. And any time that we've been back here to look at it, there's not been a soul on it or working on it. I know they've got bigger and better boats, but this is ridiculous. So while the boat is getting bottom paint, we have a project going on for today, which is what? I'm doing organization right now in the garage. I put the uh, cushions the way they should be up here in the reverse. Here in the, uh, the cabin. The cabin. So that beige one is where the table goes. The table goes, and when you take the table off, you can put it down in that slot. See how it's at the same angle as the table over there? Yeah. So. It's not as much of an angle as the right. table, it's weird. I know, so I, I'm so you, that's where that goes. Okay. It may not go there, I don't know. So one person can sleep here, one person well, can sleep you can, there. What you can do is you can, these. Those are for the cockpit. The cockpit. And for making a big huge bed in the cabin. Ooh, this nice 1981. What is this? Plaid? What's it called? Welcome back, Carter. Four shack. <laughs> on a and uh sort of trying to take some of the Unzip these and these are unzip the, them so that we can wash. Yeah, wash take them, them off, and this is what started happening. They started falling apart. Oy. Um, yeah. Forty-year-old zippers. Forty-year-old zippers. So, but one thing I was impressed with are these. It looks like these were newer because they used plastic, so they won't corrode. Yeah. So that's one thing that's nice for those. Well, the white ones that go in the cockpit are in pretty good shape. Yeah, those... I'm gonna clean those up hopefully today. And get them yeah. Clean, but yeah, I was making room up here so I can. That'll be our boat storage up there. Well, we kind of make it so we can get them out. These are all of our windows that Donovan spent endless hours cleaning, scrubbing, and scraping. And then we put all new seal inside about a week ago. We still haven't been able to put them on the boat because the boat is still at the shop. Uh, we are now at day 12, day 14, day 14, that they have a boat. Fifteen days. Well, at least it's sitting on the trailer straight now. I guess they didn't, they don't put a new blue tape, huh? They don't put new tape on it. This side, this side has the same blue stripe and it still has duct tape on it or whatever. Painter's tape. That's actually, it's this, mate. Yeah, that's, yeah, that needs to come off. The keel already has like a huge gash through it. Like, look at the paint right there. Oh my God, okay, just awesome. We just got it painted and it already has a gash on it. Time to move on to other things, Claudine.
the white line, that is where the outside of this window is gonna go, okay? Okay. So once you get it in there, I'm gonna go in the inside and screw in the other piece to attach it, okay? Got it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this in here like this, and then we're going to try to hold it to that line. See how I'm doing it? Yeah. Try to hold it to the line the best you can and where I can get a screw in there and start it, okay? okay. But first we gotta put stuff on it. Um, we're gonna caulk all of this on the inside. Okay. I can do it in there and then give it to you and you set it in there and then I go However ahead. However you're more comfortable, it's fine with me. So let me go ahead and get in there. Okay. Well, you want me to hold that while you get in? Yeah. Can you do it in the video? I'm gonna figure something out. By the way, we can't put the, uh, the white stuff on the thing. I measured it. Oh, if we put the white trim around the table, it's not going to fit? Wide. Oh, bummer. Well, I'm glad we didn't finish it then. And by we, I mean you. Every single one of my videos so far says, and by we, I mean you. <laughs> I'm taking an awful lot of credit <laughs> for a lot of stuff. I think people will know automatically that it is you doing it. So no comment from him means he's either not paying any attention to me or he agrees with my statement. When we put that black rubber thing in there, there was white stuff you squeezed in there first and then we put the black rubber thing in, do you remember? Inside the window pane. Oh Wait. no, this is different. This is a different. Thing. This is a fast cure adhesive. I don't know what that other was. But it all came together in the box from Catalina. Mm -hmm. Your instructions told you to use the other one for. Now. Careful touching it. Okay. Remember, we want to try and. Keep it as close to the line as you can. Okay. This goes this way. All right, go ahead. Watch the white now. And I will try to get this as quick as possible. So, if I could, you know, start it and I'll see if I could hold it in here while I'm doing this, okay? You get it where you're. White. Now it is. The white stuff is oozing out. That's it's good. Okay I'll, that's why I put the tape there. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Just push in. Push in on the middle of the glass. Glass. That's fine. Looking good. It's right, I mean, it's centered with all the blue tape. Yeah. That's what, down here, it's a little bit of white. But... He is slow and meticulous and a perfectionist. So I trimmed about 13 minutes of drill noise for you all. And that's still on the first window. We have three more to go. You're welcome. Wait, this just dropped a little bit. Okay. You got it? It dropped on you? It dropped a little bit, but... Well, that's probably because I'm trying to... There we go. Trying to find the holes. Are all four windows identical? No. So you know for sure this one goes in this hole? Yeah, it's the only size. It's the only way to fit. There's a little bit out 
Feel like you're good? It looks good from out here, but in there I see a gap. Well, that gap right here? No, like, yeah, right there. I gotta put that rubber gasket in there. There's another rubber gasket? Mm -hmm. That pops in there. deployed up through Atlanta next week. Yeah. I might try to find that guy in Atlanta and see if he still has that pop top, the oh, slider yeah. part. That and... Did he have something else? He had the front pulpit or bow pulpit or whatever the hell it's called. But we don't need that. We needed the stern pulpit. And we don't need that anymore because we have given our life savings to Catalina the Red. Oh, turkey bird. What happened? I gotta put a metal bracket on there to put, the, put this thing up. Thing on there to hold the uh, curtain rods in there. I'm here, why not put them in? You want me to go get them? Huh? They're on the floor over by where the paint got spilled. Yeah, but they just pop in. There's four per window. Two top, two bottom. I'm going to grab it again. Watch your fingers. Don't get there. Now I got this. Got it. And so to recap, we will have a future episode on repairing the trailer. We're in no hurry since we have the boat slip, but one never knows what could happen in the future. We may have to get her out of the water stat for some reason and not be prepared for it, especially with the way our deployments go. We hope you enjoyed this episode and will watch the rest of them. Please feel free to comment below with any ideas or suggestions, or click on the thumbs up button, or the subscribe button, or all of the above. that takes you on to actual Hilton Head Island right there. Look at how the sun changes the colors of the water. Oh, we're about to come about. Hang on. Watchers, we have four times. Now the wind hits you, he's got nowhere to go. So we had a moment all your, all your, uh, of yikersness where everything fell down. What you're doing as it is. Choppy out here, but this is my first experience.